Today I'll show you how I made this shot glass serving tray. So we have our board here. It is a five inch by 24 inch board. Uh, so we'll just take our shot glasses and kind of do a rough layout to see how much of this or if we'll need all of it. You know, a little bit of space at the end is 12 inches. So you know, we'll just go ahead and cut this in half and glue those two pieces together. Alright, so now that we've got our two pieces of wood, we're ready to glue them together. Get our pieces together. And we'll just throw on as many clamps as we can fit. Try to get even clamping pressure around the board. Just alternating clamps. All right, so our glue's been drying for about four hours. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the clamps. All right, so we have the clamps off, glue is dried. Next thing we're gonna do is just run this through our table saw, take a little bit off of each edge to square everything up. power. Alright, we're back with more power and the dust mask. Let's give it another shot. Alright, with the two long edges cleaned up, we're just going to square up the short sides as well. Now that we've got all four sides of our board kind of cleaned up, I uh, want to figure out exactly what diameter hole we want in our board. Um, we're going to leave about a quarter of an inch at the bottom uh, for the shot glass to sit on. And we want to have a little bit of extra room because uh, not every shot glass is exactly the same size. This is a pretty standard shot glass, uh, so it'll be good for creating our template. Um, so I'm going to do that by just drilling a test hole in uh, two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. That's the same thickness as our board here. Uh, we're going to start with uh, an inch and five eighths and I think that's going to be the size we want. So let's give it a shot and just kind of test it out. All right, so we're only about three quarters of an inch deep, uh, just barely into the second piece of plywood. And it is pretty tight on our shot glass already. So we're gonna go next size up, uh, do an inch and three quarters in our board. We're gonna measure out here how far we want the center of each hole from the edge. We've got about four and three quarters. Uh, we will be taking out uh, we did our math off camera and our holes are going to be about an inch and a quarter in from the edge the center of each hole the first hole will be an inch and seven eighths from the edge and about three inches uh, between the center of each hole so what we're going to do is just kind of take a smaller bit 
and mark the center of each hole so that the bit will fit right in and we will be accurate. Now we just have to hog these out. So you saw me stop there and kind of look closely at my work. Universal sign of, oops, I screwed up. You'll see the spacing on this set of holes is much closer together than between these holes. So that's all right. We're going to have a little bit of character on our piece. Before we drill the last two, we're just going to make sure center to center on this set is the same as this side. And then we will trim our board up on this side to have the same distance to the edge of the board. Uh, and then we will make up a story about what this space is for. All right, let's make sure it looks right this time. Yeah, looks about right. At least it's symmetrical now. Well, it will be after we trim this side off a little bit. And now I'll cut some decorative grooves into the side of the block. Well, that is pretty much it for the construction of the tray. Um, I actually really like how the three thinner reveals came out uh, rather than doing one or two larger ones. Uh, I did make the center one just a little bit larger uh, than the other two, but I think it looks really cool. Um, so you could do a round over on the edges or, you know, within each hole, uh, but I'm just going to hit it with some sandpaper and uh, just smoothing those up a little bit um, and then we'll be ready for some finish. All right, that's it. We should be ready for some finish. So we've got our piece all sanded. We are ready to apply our finish. We are going to try some Odie's oil on this. Uh, Odie's oil polishes and protects, restores and revitalizes. Uh, most importantly of all, it is food safe. It only takes one coat if you put it on right. And unlike most other finishes, it actually smells good. Uh, so a little bit goes a long way. We'll mix it up. We're gonna kind of work it into the wood grain with some super fine steel wool. Let it sit for about an hour and then we'll buff it off with an old rag uh, or an old shirt. So we'll see how it goes. So it's been about an hour and you can still feel some oil on the surface, which means it's pretty much absorbed everything it's gonna absorb. So we're just gonna take an old t-shirt and buff off everything that's left on the surface. All right guys, that's about it. Everything is buffed off, not oily anymore. 
uh, should wait about a couple days before you really put it to use. Um, they do say two to three weeks to fully cure, so longer you wait, the better. Um, but pretty much good to go.